I know that she likes pre-approved questions. I know that she fears the media. That being said, I already know that, you know, he had an agreement, right? So agreement aside though, agreement aside, he has an obligation, right? He has an obligation as a journalist to do the right thing. You also, uh, you have a charity that, um, uh, from the attorney general's office is, I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation. I don't know nothing about that. Um, I'm not crazy, I'm not. The attorney general's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, found- your foundation? So I wanna set the record straight. I don't have a foundation. Girl, that's your charity, stop. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? Yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just be honest. So we're gonna talk about at least some of the, just the lies that she threw out there and Roland didn't have anything to say. So it looks to me that this was a PR move, right? The Super Mary did not go to local media. She didn't go to, I think it was at Fox 32 in Chicago. Didn't go to the Lansing Journal. They're, you know, the places that actually locally are covering this stuff every day. So you would think if you want, this is a local story. It became international, but she's able to go to Roland Martin. I know Roland Martin's a big, a big deal. He has over a million subscribers. He's been on mainstream TV and all that type of thing. But that was bad, Roland. That was bad. And I know it's a local story. You have you have some kind of news network. You have a lot of stories. But you came in like he had no idea what was going on. The man didn't do a lick of research. It's either he didn't do any research and he's not good at what he's doing. Or something else has happened and Roland allowed her to say whatever she wanted to say. No follow up with a question. Hey, well, hey, here's a clip. I mean, oh yeah, just watched Fox 32 YouTube channel. Contacted the Lansing Journal. I mean, that's what journalists are supposed to do. Like, hey, I have this interview with this mayor. Is anything she's saying going to be full of shit? Let let me do some due diligence just to collaborate because you know what she's going to say and you can counter with videos and articles about what's happening. And he he just, I don't know if he knew the woman. Did he know the woman before she came on? I got it. It just, it was so bad. Before we went to the break, I talked about the, again, this this charity. And the Illinois Attorney General's office, this is what, this is from a CBS affiliate there, says that the accusation comes at the same time the Illinois Attorney General's office told Henry's charity multiple times in recent months to stop improperly soliciting donations because it had not registered with the state as required by law. Uh, and, and you say that's not your charity. Correct. Were you ever... For real, though? For real? So the, the super mayor that puts her name and likeness to everything that she, everything she touches, it has to have her name on it, right? The $1 million giveaway, all the billboards, all the pamphlets, the, the podcast that she's going to be talking about later on. It says Tiffany cares. It has her big face on it. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No, what? What? What, what charity? What are you talking about? So that was, so show the video here. I'm trying to understand this here. So this is a video of the, of you marching with the charity. So what is this? So what they're not telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill to help anybody that suffered for cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton, Thorn Township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people by giving them $10,000. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating and we're still working on it. When I went through the Republican states, the Republican areas, we didn't have any issue. Everybody was on board because everybody is suffering from cancer or knows someone that passed or is actually going through it. So that was the whole purpose of the walk to basically bring awareness and bring people together. That's what the whole purpose of it is. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation, who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody, everybody was there. No, 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 what I'm saying is, what is the Tiffany Henry Cares, Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation, they named it after me, and they like my work that I do in the community, and it's called Tiffany Henry Cares. Okay, so that's what she says. Okay, so let's, let's play this video real quick. A shout to Sherry. We have some documents as well. I just checked the email. So she said, I don't know, man. Someone just, someone loved me so much and they see what I've been doing. She is the Tiffany. I am the dream handyard, right? They looked at her like, man, she's great. She got, she made this really cool ice rink and she's doing all these things. Look, look at that Tahoe. We're going to make it in her name. She's amazing. So let's see, let's see that that actually is true. I'm really, really big on, as dear to my heart, it's a real big on Cancer Foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation. 
Let's repeat that again. Let's repeat. She said, and, and Roland, I don't know what you're talking about. Someone did it for me. Let's repeat the last the last 10 seconds. I'm really, really big on as dear to my heart. It's I'm real big on cancer foundation. I have created Tiffany Hingard uh, Cares Foundation. And what that is it was that who's speaking? That's 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 Tiffany Hingard, right? She you hear her talking about she created it. So what what is she talking about now? Why Roland didn't do any research on this? He should have did more time to research what was going on. Details is helping everybody within the 17 municipalities with services such as uh, well services and resources, such as would you need help paying for chemo, radiation, your medicine, your wigs, your prosthetic, um, your breasts, uh, things of that nature, even helping you with housing. If you cannot live in Chicago uh, to benefit from this foundation, it's strictly for uh, people that live in the 17 communities. Uh, we are doing a cancer walk October 4th. Let's okay. hear what she said um, again. <laughs> so were you ever, so, that was, so show, show the video here, I'm trying to understand this here. So this is a video of the of you marching with the charity. So what is this? So what they're not telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill to help anybody that suffered for cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton or township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people by giving them $10,000. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating and we're still working on it. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation. Uh -huh. Who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody. Everybody was there. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what is the <laughs> Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation. They named it after me and they like my work. That I you, you made it up. You did. The somebody is you. The somebody is you. Thank you for this, this right here. Tiffany Henry's Foundation. Keith Friedman, all those names are people that I, at this point now, I'm getting more familiar with. Uh, Kamal Woods, I know I'm familiar with that name. Uh, William Moore. So is it someone, Keith? Like, either way, it's you. This is your foundation. You lied You lied to Mr. Rowland. How dare you? The Thornton Township put $10,000 in this, which doesn't make any sense because you don't use taxpayer money to start any kind of charity with your, you know the name of the person running everything. Someone didn't donate the $10,000. You did. You took it and put it in there. The Superman is all about her image. The $10,000 came from the Taunton Township. The woman started the damn thing. They, but they weren't registered. Have you contacted them and told them you can't use my name improperly? Well, my lawyer's handling a lot of that stuff, so all I can tell you is that I'm not the one on anything. Wait, wait, she's not on anything? So who, all right, now we see Keith's name there. And Keith is basically her right hand man. But no one can just take your name and just start something. It, it doesn't work that way. So is she throwing Keith under the bus? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. It, it's just crazy. So I can tell you right now. So I'm just trying to answer to the. So you're saying there's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you. Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the. How is it not? It's nothing. It has nothing to do with her. It has nothing to do with her. Is she trying to throw Mr. Keith Freeman under the bus there talking about her security detail and didn't really explain all of the details of why she's in the position she's in, but she just said, well, it's in the collective bargaining agreement. I'm just following the rules. Like, okay, we'll see. The work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines. Correct. Okay. The, going back to your trustees, they have talked about travel. So let's speak about that. When sure. you're traveling, sure. when you're traveling, are you traveling on behalf of the city of Dalton or Thornton Township? It depends. It depends on what it is. So if I'm going to recon, recon is a big, platform for economic development where people go from all over it's the largest in the nation and everybody go to basically promote their plot of land so when we bring starbucks to town you want to bring for instant miles was a trauma center mm -hmm. so things like that is what we go for and then our job is to bring those things back on a plan it might not happen this year it might happen a two years out plan and that's what people don't understand they think it should happen right now you went to this conference what did you do right now you can be working on a deal and come the next term the next may or the next trustee or whoever will benefit from it. Who told her to say that? Who, who told her to explain it that way? So in her mind, she can go first class, Vegas, eat, you know, really good restaurants, go to New York, hang out, go to Bubba Gump Trim, get the, get the hat and say, listen, we out here making deals. And yeah, this, the deals may not materialize right now. It may not materialize until the next term. By that time, you took all that money, 
and for what? So we are in a deficit, but it's not what everybody's claiming it to be. They're going around with false allegations of five million, seven million, eight million. It's all false. Our deficit is two million dollars. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. So she's saying it's it's nowhere. I mean, eventually the truth should come out about the the, the debt. Just by the, her the overtime for the police officers, it don't seem like to me it's only two million dollars. But I'm not there. I don't have all the financial records, but. Some tells me it's a little bit more than what she's laying on it, especially she already is a parent. She already lied earlier about the, or later on, she'll be lying about the charity. When it comes to the budget, just the budget. Right. Yes. Right. So in terms of who's deciding to pay the bill, so this deficit that you have, you're saying that's a result of the trustees not paying the city's bills? Correct. But, but do you have the resources? Yes. To pay, to pay the bills? Yes. So how's your deficit? because they won't pay the bills. So it's still on our books. Until we release the check and pay the bill, we still count it as a... Well, the problem is with that is she's not being transparent. So they don't know what's going on. You've, you, you locked them out, literally locking them out of the information. They want to know what's going on. Why they will continue to give you money when you don't know what's happening? That's the back and forth. That's where we are. Let's take a break on her voice for a second. I like to bring in Nikita. She, I know she's ready to say what she has to say here. So before we jump in, let everyone know who you are. Well, I am Dr. Nikita Nietzsche Cloud. I am the former chief of staff to Mayor Henyard, and uh, I am a public relations professional. So I do have to tip my hat to the Whitley Agency who handled this PR for Tiffany. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, from 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 the beginning. I thought I, I thought he was going to do where Roland about, Martin, like he always do. Yeah, I thought he's going to set up, you know, kind of a setup. Hey, who you are and what your responsibilities are and how much you get. And then I thought some more aggressive questioning would, and it's never happened. Yeah, so just from knowing Tiffany, right? One of the things I can almost guarantee you is the only way she took that interview is if there was approved questioning. So usually what she do is she put out a disclaimer like, hey, I'll do this interview, but I can't say this, or I can't say that, or you can't ask me this. So you have to think about it from a person that literally do the same thing you do. So, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not even saying it's ethical, but if you look at it like that, Nobody has interviewed Tiffany. The only other person who has interviewed Tiffany was Ben Bradley, which was, you know, media gold. Let's just be honest. She now, did not look good. <laughs> she did not look good at all. Now, Roland Martin is the only person. So it takes a person like myself, right? Or for her, in her case, her publicist, who already have the relationship with Roland Martin, right? And they'll yeah. say, hey, listen, I want you to interview her. I'll give you this exclusive. She's hot right now. Right. Very, She's yeah. Real estate when it comes to this. So it's like, well, but you can't ask her about this. If you notice, like I didn't I, I kind of look past what he said or what he mm. didn't say. I looked at what he didn't ask. And none of those questions highlighted her misappropriation of funds. He did yep. not deep dive into her salary. I mean, the salary part. So like she blatantly lied about the salary. For example, I know she mentioned like 224,000 and 50,000 at okay, so what she said was she's part-time. That's a lie. Let's start there. But then yeah. she mentioned that and I'm going to clarify that in a second because I know some people going to say no, she's part-time, but I'll clarify that. First yeah. thing she said was she get $224,000 as Thornton Township supervisor. Is that right? That's a yes and no, because where she left out was she get a stipend, she get expense accounts, she get those $600 a day per diems. So realistically, she's making well over $300,000 from the mm -hmm. township alone. Now, we, we mosey on over to the village of Dalton. Is she making $50,000 a year? She's actually around 47. Yes. But what she did fail to, miss, to mention is she's also the liquor commissioner, which comes with a different salary. So she's almost knocking at that hundred thousand a year at the village of Dalton as well. So wow. what she did was she did a lot of wordplay, right? And not even good at this wordplay. So I can tell from the beginning of the conversation, she had a set amount of questions that they, they prepped her on. But then you notice when she started to get frustrated, she went rogue. Like, for example, I took some notes when she kept lying. And she said that she kept taking shots at like trustee Belcher, right? And, you know, she said a few things about her. She took some other lies, like the charity, 
girl, that's your charity. Stop. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just be honest. So yeah. for you to get on there on a national platform, so I'm going to look at the positive. The reality of the matter is, just like you was on, I was on, I know for a fact several major news publications were on because I personally invited them and we were on a chat together talking about it. That being said, she screwed herself. So if just to say a federal agent that we know are all out here in the village of Dalton, they're watching just the what as well, and they watched her lie about the foundation. I mean, so what is the point? If it's not your foundation, you spent what seventy five thousand dollars to take a walk for this foundation that you say is really not yours. Come on now, sis. Did you really utilize Thornton Township resources for this foundation that you say is not yours? I mean, it was full of contradictions. And then with Roland Martin, that was just the lack of journalistic integrity in the entire matter. I don't want to say I'm going to say allegedly because it did come off that perhaps maybe a little bread was buttered. I'm just saying when you see I've seen Roland Martin interviews Go there. going after people. Back and forth arguments, screaming matches, which is custom to how our political commentary is supposed to be a lot of fireworks, mm -hmm. people going back and forth. It seemed the energy was off again. But the flip side, I'm gonna give him a little. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little credit. Let's mm -hmm. give him a little credit here. He still allowed her to get all of that rope and hang herself <laughs> because, like, it was one part when he asked. He said, "Listen, so you're saying this is not your charity?" She said, "No, it's not, sir." And he played Look at this video. You, you got the T-shirt on. And he was like, OK, I mean, because at the end of the day, you can yeah. utilize this. He has a public platform. We can literally take that and utilize that as proof. She can't take it down like she would do if, let's say, you know, was a village of Dalton, you know, page, things like that. She can't do that because it's yeah. his page and he's not going to he's not going to remove it because. He did numbers, in my opinion, was that sideway disrespect of Jason House, right? Talk about that. That was, so like you said, be nice to her, kid gloves to her, but Jason House, he's interrupting. It was it was such a big difference in how he was mm -hmm. speaking to, what were you thought about that? Yeah, he even rolled his sleeves up and did that. Outrageous. Yeah, he did. Didn't get him at the same favorite. time. He was quick to kind of just move on and move past it, kind of make it seem like he was doing the fair and balance. Okay, talk to the mayor, let's talk about the talk to the main trustee that he, he's having some beef with, she's having beef with. And then it just it was just it was cringe to say the least. It was definitely cringe. It was cringe, but I think that Jason held his own. He he maintained his integrity. He handled those questions with poise. He was accurate, although he did not get an opportunity to say everything. I, I can assume because I saw how he kept getting cut off, kept getting cut off. And that's honestly when I started thinking that perhaps, you know, a deal was made or even, you know, pre-approved questions, because I have seen that happen on several occasions. And just working with Tiffany, it was like, um, I know that, you know, I tried to get her press or I'd gotten her a, a feature in Essence magazine. I gotten her a feature in Black Enterprise. And she was the exact same way. Like if they didn't ask only these questions, and this is before all of, yeah. you know, the scandal and all of these things, because had I known that she was this individual, I would have by no means gotten her these, you know, this coverage. But I know that she likes pre-approved questions. I know that she fears the media. That being said, I already know that, you know, he had an agreement, right? So mm -hmm. agreement aside, though, yeah. agreement aside, but he has an obligation, right? He has an obligation as a journalist to do the right thing. He has a journalistic obligation to accurately report the news. In my personal opinion, he did not do that. He was very careful. He was very strategic. And to me, it appeared that there were pre-approved questions that he did not want to answer. He wanted to respect her opinion because she was face to face. Whereas Jason was online yeah. and he's a man and he went harder with him. Now, also in a perfect world, I get what he was saying. I'm just being fair. When he said that, you know, the board has the majority, but where he's missing out on the board surely has the majority, mm -hmm. but she has the, the directors, you know, she has the staff, she has all of this. So if she's strong arming these people, and I know for a fact 
that she is. I know for a fact she tell the directors, the employees, if they comply, they're fired. I know for a fact she does this. So he doesn't know that nor did he take the time to do the research because all you have to do is put in on Google, Tiffany Henry's name and click on news. All of your facts are there. Or I shouldn't have had to call you to invite Jason House on the show. You get what I'm saying to them to say, hey, I got the mayor on the show. Let's get Jason House on because you got to keep it fair. You got to keep it balanced. When I was on Anton, I encourage Anton Daniel, shout out. I encouraged him to reach out to Henyard and say, get her on the show. Fact check. If I'm lying, go ahead, come back behind me, drop your receipts, or better yet, let's get us on a show together. I would love to go toe to toe with Tiffany Henyard. Yeah. But she probably would not want to do that. Like I said, she wants maximum control mm -hmm. over everything that's going on. So, yeah, I just felt like with Roland, he just, it looked like it was just, he was just being naive. He's he, being he, nice. I don't know what's going on. And I'm just trying to get all sides here. And what do you mean you guys can't work this out? Have you talked to the, you know, the, the senator or whatever? You talked to higher ups to kind of, let's just stop this nonsense. Oh, don't you, like you said, have the majority uh other staff reports. Like, like you said, how said it? All staff reports are directly going to the mayor's office. There's been instances where employees have been faced disciplinary mm -hmm. actions, exter uh, termination. They're getting paid more than they've ever been paid before. And that's what it is. You said it right there. You got to look at it like this, right? You, okay, example, and I am so sorry. I'm just going to put people out there and I did not do that before. You got to look at who is in her circle. If anybody, okay, first of all, Keith Freeman, right? For yeah. example, Keith Freeman. I mean, this is allegedly, but we know that it's public information. He has financial issues. So if right. you're dangling a few hundred thousand dollars around him, he said it even in a video, some, some church or religious video he did himself that he and his wife was dealing with some financial troubles or Correct. something yeah. like that. These are all his words. No one is mincing his words. So I know that when he was at other municipalities, that actual position where he's the village administrator at a hundred thousand a year, he was not making that right he was making half of that because other municipalities were not paying that right so now you get a hundred thousand a year and then she becomes supervisor three months later she hits you with another 65 70 grand a year so now you know he's at almost 200k so he's living comfortable he could probably pay a bill or two or buy a car, get it repoed or whatever, you know, hey, I mean, yeah. but, but you know what I'm saying? And then you have, let's just say a, what do you call that guy? The deputy chief of police. I mean, yeah. he has a background a mile long. Yeah. Right. So now he has what's what, you know, like, okay, so now he's getting his promotions in any reasonable town, no reasonable, you know, municipality would promote someone with such a background. Now, let me yes, go. History, yes, history is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. spotty, to say the least. And, yeah. And he's never done anything to me personally. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying just, you know, he he's given shady. He's giving, you know, a little bit. Of, I'll do whatever it takes to keep my job. You know, I saw some videos where he was harassing a woman during a traffic stop. I you saw the same video. I so, exactly. yeah, you got that. Right. I'm trying to think of who else. Her, her, her assistant. And then she hired her as the trustee at the township. She's also her landlord. I don't know if you guys know that. Wow. So it's kind of hard to combat the, combat the person who literally gives you your roof. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, you have that. And it's a few others. So what she usually do is she preys on the, I don't mean it's disrespectfully, but she preys on the weak. Yeah. So money is money and, and money can, I mean, th that's the whole point of corruption, mm -hmm. right? Money is extremely powerful resource that you can use to, control people, manipulate people. Yeah. And if you never made that kind of money before, you don't, you know, you will, some of us, hopefully not most of us, but they'll, you will do some, some shady stuff. And I think with her, it's obvious, but again, it's obvious to everyone, but Roland, Roland has not been on a YouTube check. He did not type in Tiffany Hager's name at all. He couldn't have. He, couldn't he have. did. And, you know, so, I mean, you got to look at it like this too. You know, it's, you know, if you, if you're a good publicist, you have relationships with journalists and that's just the reality of the matter. So if you ask, you know, that, Hey, can you do my girl a solid? 
Can you get her on the show? That's the girl that's been in the news. Mm -hmm. You know, she's all over. You're going to definitely get the hits. He like, yeah, let's get her on today. He probably, you know, whoever he probably had on there originally, because if you notice, he didn't promote her before today. So right. he probably had someone else. They fell off. Someone knows somebody. He did a solid. He got on the show, didn't get a chance to vet. But things I know about Ron Roland Martin, he's not done. He's going to answer to this because once the, you know, like he see your video or he see, you know, Sean Burns or, you know, Anton and then or even the news. When he starts seeing that, he doesn't like that pressure. Right. Because he's been in this game a long time and he's even been under pressure before. He's yeah. definitely going to answer. So I don't think that that was it. I don't think we've heard the last of that when it comes to him. So, you know, I don't really. I think that he is going to answer. I did send him. So he is in receipt of some videos. I did send him some, you know, some fact checks. Since, um, so let's just see what happens there. What was the other thing? You know, the, the going back and forth about the salary with her lying there. Like she, all she did, as she say her haters, yeah. all she did was give her haters more content in her words, you know, that's the way yeah. I see it. So I don't look at the, the interview with Roland Martin as quote unquote um, for to the residents I'm speaking to. I don't look at yeah. that as a loss whatsoever. I think that she will probably think it was a slam dunk. That's just, you know, the narcissistic behavior that yeah. she has. However, I do not look at it as a loss as it relates to the residents of Dalton getting justice. I yeah. just don't see it as that at all whatsoever. I see it as what she did was she further gave the yeah. residents of Dalton, the authorities or whoever else that, you know, need this information. I really think that she just gave it to them on a on a platter. And yeah. I'm happy. I, I think it was a slam dunk. I think Jason House did very well. I'm happy he did not lose his school because I probably would have snapped. But again, that's why I'm not an elected official. And I get Me neither, right? I can it's, say it's, what, and that's what you need. with it. <laughs> you need that. As a politician, you need a lot of mm -hmm. patience dealing with all types of things. But yeah, so before we head out for a second, at least, at least yeah. in terms of talking about uh, the legal battles. So she says she won 24 cases. But, you know, like even House said, there's there's still it's not even still, 24 cases. There is a 24 cases. There's still five lawsuits that are still either still it's still pending. Like there's still stuff like what this is the is lines? Where's she get? Yeah. Let me explain that. So what yeah. happens is, let's say, for example, you are suing Tiffany because she came and cut all the wires to your home. Right. And well, she cut off the street lights that on your on your block. Let me just give that example. So she cut off the street lights and you get robbed and you blame her, right? And you say, I'm gonna sue you. So I go to court because the lights are still off on the block. So you go in and say, I need a sooner court date. So you file an emergency motion to get the court date seen before the judge within three to five days, right? Yeah. And then you go to court within three to five days, and then the judge say, Well, I don't really see this as an emergency. So your temporary restraining order to stop her from turning the lights off on my block has been denied, but we will see your case on the regular scheduled court date, right? She's taking that, well, he said that he can't see our case now as a win. And that's no, not yeah. a win. That's what he's saying is when he deny, he's denying the TRO, which is a temporary restraining order versus the case itself. All the cases are still ongoing. Nothing has been quote unquote with maybe the exception of um, what the recall. And I think the bank account information, which is still in, in my opinion, is kind of ongoing as well. Don't yeah. quote me on that, but she's never really won a case. Now we know what happened with the recall. That was a technicality. Yeah. So, I mean, it Other is than that, 24 yeah. and 0 does not make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But another thing I want to point out that she mentioned that about, and I, I have this written down too. She said that that salary thing, you know, where the salary goes down to $40,000. Yeah, I remember. Was, yeah. I mean, no, what, what was it? Is it 40? No, 25,000. She stated that that was already put in place. No, that's not true as well. There was something where the setup so basically, for example, Frank Zuccarelli, the previous supervisor who sadly passed away year before last, he had been in that position for 35 years. So quite naturally, his salary 
justify his 35 year tenure. Yeah. Now, inflation, just uh, inflation expenses, and stuff things like that, of that yeah. sort. However, there was an ordinance that if he, he retire or whatever, it starts at another, it goes back to a different tier. I can't remember what that tier was, but it definitely wasn't 25,000. Tiffany went and changed the ordinance. And I know she says she did not. She tried to make it seem like it was already there. And that was not the case. She changed it to be 25,000, not because of what was her excuse that the people felt that she was making too much. If that was the case, she would have just took 25,000 herself. The salary stays the same if she win the seat. The salary only change if she, you know, the salary only change if she loses. If she what loses, she yeah. To do was discourage people for running against for that seat, but she didn't say that. He didn't question that. So that's why I'm a little disappointed. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. he had that opportunity to ask those questions, and he did not. So that's where he, you know, he kind of dropped that ball there. Like it was a lot of opportunities that he could have probed. And he didn't. Yeah, there's a lot. But like you said, and I, 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 you know, I feel a little better talking to you about that in terms of, yeah, let everyone hear what she had to say mm -hmm. and what's not been said mm -hmm. that you can kind of make your own conclusions throughout an amount of evidence. And people here yeah. talking about this, like there's not is not we're not in a bizarre world. Yeah, he slipped up. He like you said, I think he probably may go a little more aggressive to talking about the situation after he realizes all of the mistakes that have been done. Um, but I, I think, yeah, I think that point of just put put it out there. Put what she say out there because a lot of people are are watching. It was about mm -hmm. 2,000 people checking out. So there's enough people to see what she's saying is right or wrong. Do you have a uh, we'll touch on the collective bargaining agreement regarding the mayor's security detail? So House said it's it's allows for reasonable security, but it does not support... Exactly. The excessive overtime costs that have been incurred, especially if there's a, a budget issue, a significant budget strain. Like, mm -hmm. what do you think? It, like, I, I guess I don't, I don't have the collective bargaining agreement. Well, well here's the deal. Let weird. me break that down for you, bro. So sure. here's the deal. So think about it. In Illinois, we have, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down in a way that, I'm going to break it down in a way that, you know, with a law that's in Illinois. So we have, we're concealed in carry state, right? So, you know, we have the right with a license to carry a weapon. Now, when it comes to us using that weapon, we have to say we reasonably, we have to reasonably believe our life is in danger, right? Mm -hmm. So what does reasonably look like? Reasonably look like what? You are in my home. You are attacking me. I can reasonably protect myself. Right. The ordinance states that only officers are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials. Right. So officers are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials. Right. So let's say this elected she has the security detail walking her around going to house to house she has a security detail going to pick up her babies she's a president it doesn't say anything about a mayor being entitled to because if that's the case jason can have security kiana can have security tammy yeah. can have security in fact i'm petty enough if i were them i'll go get it just to see i mean this is it says elected officials Right. Not the mayor. So that means if we're reasonably, you get what I'm saying? They right, right, right. can yeah. have detail. So when she play on those words, that reasonably word, come on now, sis. So I don't think she even know what the law is, if I'm being honest with you. So that being said, reasonable. She have a major event or, you know, something like that is happening in town. Terrorist attack, whatever. Right. Reasonable. Not picking up your baby from school, going to do your laundry, going right into God. Tiffany, myself, and her detail one time went to a burger shop in Chicago for lunch. After that burger shop, it was around her daughter's birthday. So if anybody want to fact check this, we went to Chicago Ridge Mall on 95th to go shopping for her daughter's birthday party stuff. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. What is reasonable about that? And I'll never forget that day because I felt like I was kidnapped because I'm out here running around with a kid for a kid. I don't even know. 
Right. So no, reasonable security detail. is not for certainly not for yeah. out of state. Certainly yeah. not for any of that. So what are we doing here, sis? He didn't question that. No, like he didn't have the information. 